In this video, let us continue our discussion and inspect our first node application in detail. Now for the first time this code where I am passing a function as a parameter to this create server function might look bit confusing to you. So let's make it bit simpler. Now in JavaScript everything that you see is actually an object. For example, this whole statement on the right represent one object. And this variable on the left stores the reference to that object. Similarly here, this whole statement is actually an object which is being stored in the reference of server. Similarly, any function that you see in JavaScript is basically an object. So here if you define constant request listener and paste the function that you are passing here as a parameter, cut it and paste it here, then you will find that here we have one object which is being referred by this variable of request listener. And also note that this function does not contain any name. It just contains some parameters with a body like this. Now this variable is pointing to this function. That is this variable represent that function. So here as a parameter you can actually pass request listener. Now one important thing to note here is that you do not call this function by using brackets like this. Like you call any function in any programming language. But instead you just pass the reference to that function like this. Just the variable name. Fine. Well there is a big difference between these two. By using the reference you just mean that in the runtime this variable will be replaced by this function as a parameter within this create server function. Now coming back to this request listener. Well from the previous video we know that this function will be invoked whenever there is an HTTP request from client. That is when a client send request to the server then this function will be invoked. So inside this function you can read all information about your HTTP request which is stored within this variable of request. And by information I mean that you can extract what URL is user sending along or what IP address are they coming from and many other things. And this end function is being used to write data to this response object and then close the connection. Now this statement is actually equivalent to two statements which I will show you right now such as response dot write the message and then response dot end like this. So these two statements are equivalent to this single line of code or you can say that this statement is just a shortcut to write data to the response object and then end the connection. Since it is an HTTP communication thing we need to follow some HTTP protocol and that protocol for example requires an explicit signal that the communication is over. This is exactly why we needed to use dot end method here. Well visually it means that until the end function is called the HTTP session will think that we are still working on the response object. But once end function is called or executed the server sends back response object to the client hence closes the HTTP connection. This means the communication between client and server is now over. Now moving on of course in the previous video we talked about create server function. Where we talked about it just creates the server but does not activates it. So to activate the server we have listen function which we call on our server object. So here we are passing the first argument as the port number with which your server will interact with the client on your operating system. And here again as a second parameter we are passing a function. To make things simple here again we can create a variable and call it as confirmation listener or you can say confirmation callback. Why callback? Because this function will only be executed if the server is up and running at this port. So I will simply cut it from here and paste it here. And as usual I will pass this confirmation callback reference here. Save the file. So this function acts as a confirmation that hey now our server is ready and up and running. So that is why I am printing a message here server is running. You can change the message as per your wish. And before you run this file make sure you are currently under 
this folder and then use node space the file name. Now also note that when we ran this file, the node process did not exit immediately because the event loop is now also busy listening to the incoming connections on the port of 9000 which we have mentioned here. So that is why when you hit refresh here, we get some message from the server and it will continue to listen to this port until you stop this server by pressing Ctrl plus C. Great, isn't it? So I hope now you know all the in and out of your first node application. Congratulations, we can now dive deeper and explore node in detail from the next video onwards. See you and have a nice day.